Hello and welcome to our next tutorial for Google Web Designer. Today we want to develop a little game, an eternal runner, I call it Ninja Jump. And like for any good little game, we need a splash screen, of course. I drag and drop the image on the stage. Then I drag a tab area on the stage above the image. Adapt it to the size of the whole stage. And then, of course, add an event. This is just a basic overview for each game. Page 1 will be the splash screen. Page 1 underscore 1 will be the whole game. So now I create page 1 underscore 1. And I change the background. This will be our sky. Maybe important to know, uh, this tutorial is separated in two parts. The first part is for all the assets and animations that we need for the game. The second part will be adding some logic using the GWD API. So a sunny background looks great. I'll take this. Now I assign the tab area to our game page and our basic structure, our basic game logic is finished. Go to page, gwd add, page one underscore one. There won't be a transition, just as you will start the game as soon as you click. Let's have a look at the preview, how this looks like. I click on it and there will be the game. Okay, cool. Now we can focus on the game development. As this will be an eternal runner, of course, we need some seamless tiles. I start with a platform. Drag and drop at a stage. You may see that it has repeating pattern on it. Means um, if I put the position top left and then animate a one second, so it will be one second in duration. And then important to know that now I move the 3D position because this will be faster with less flickering. And maybe you notice that now, as soon as I have moved the platform 100 pixels, that it look exactly the same within the stage. So there is illusion if we change the animation internally, if we loop it eternally, uh, that uh, the platform will look like seamless going on, going on, like being eternally. Please don't wonder about the flickering animation. A screencast is full HD um, and my MacBook, uh, well, it took a little bit CPU usage, unfortunately, but it really looks great and really looks smooth the animation. In the, in the description of the video, you will see um, and you will be able to download uh, the full project and the assets to have a look at the code. So, what I'm doing now is I create an empty div. I call it ninja. This is where our little ninja then will be. There's a position. You change the size. Important to know that if now I've double clicked, um, now I'm in the, in the div of the ninja, which is, which behaves like a new stage. You can see that the timeline has changed now. It's empty again. And within this div, I drag and drop my ninja image. So while I'm doing that, it's important to me that um, I, if I want to animate something and uh, the animated assets uh, will maybe move on the stage, then it's important to have the animations always directly within a div because uh, I can control the div without noticing whatever happens in the animation. This is very important to be more flexible. You will see this concept later even better when you animate a ninja star. So. Um, I've set a position of the ninja. Now I'm adding a feed. I'll add two feeds. If you're looking closely, you may notice that I just saved some time. Uh, the foot is nothing else than the first five rows of pixels of the head of ninja. So what I'm doing now, you can see that I start, I set the position of the foot. So now it looks like he's standing on the platform. And what I'm doing next is that I will animate this foot. So I'm adding some keyframes on the timeline with right click. Keyframe. Next one. 
next one again. And you see in parallel what happens with the platform. This is very good because so we can find out if it really works perfectly with the foot so that the steps aren't too small and the steps aren't too big. So, changing the first keyframe. Important to know that now I change the 3D position again because this makes the animation smoothie. Okay, this works for me. Changing the next keyframe. Try it with X coordinate. Food must move a little bit to the left. Okay, third keyframe. Plus nine pixels, okay. Now lift a little bit. Okay, so. Let's have a look how the animation looks like. Uh, not fine yet. So let's uh, change the position. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's move the position in totally to the left and then maybe it looks better. Okay. Top left. Changing the position of ninja body to make it a bit so sorry for the short delay. I have to try out how the foot and the body fit best together. Okay, now I'm satisfied. I'm adding a new foot also in the same ninja container. So actually in the ninja container we have ninja body and ninja foot front and ninja foot back. So now we'll animate the foot back. We're doing exactly the same keyframes like with the front foot front. Change the start position. Okay, top left is set. And now let's add some... Okay, now it fits also better with the foot front, how it's moving together with the body. Adding now the same keyframes positions for uh, the foot back. So um, in the meanwhile, while I'm adding the values, m you may have noticed that I didn't loop the foot internally. This is because I want to later add an event which makes the animation jump back to the first frame. We will see the result in some minutes. So what I want to actually showcase in this video tutorial is not only how to create a game, but how to make use of different styles of animations. You've seen the first one with the platform, which is just um, eternally moving, moving, going on, going on by implementing the animation for one second and then loop it eternally. Here we go for another way. So now I'm that the body doesn't move so static but it's just a little bit hopping up, down. I'm also adding some keyframes here. Let's move the body minus two pixels top. Okay. Uh, so adding some values, okay, so. top and changing the last frame going down a little bit okay now let's have a look at the animation should work okay this is what i told before um i change i add now a, a label which i start which i name walk and i add an event at the end of the animation which i call walk end okay now going to the event section Adding new event, going to ninja div timeline event, walk end. As soon as if it happens to be at, if the scrub is on walk end, go to and play in the ninja animation to the label walk. 
Okay. Now let's have a look how this looks like in the browser. I click on it and it walks, 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 walks eternally. So exactly the same effect as if we would loop it, but now we're a little bit more flexible. Okay, now I've cheated a little bit. I've added a jump animation. You can see it here. This is our walk animation. And now I've added two or three more timelines after that. This is our jump animation. Jump and down some easins and so. So um, to save a little bit of time, I've prepared that now that we won't lose so much time watching this video. And we're doing here exactly the same. I add a label, which I named jump, and I add a label, which I call, uh, not a label, sorry for that, an event, which I call jump ends or jump end. So what we want to do in the game is that our ninja will jump if we click on it. Not on the ninja, but on a tab area, which I will add later. So uh, ninja, the same animation here, jump end, but as as soon as I'm in a jump mode, he shouldn't jump and jump and jump, but walk again. So as soon as he uh, ends on the uh, on the floor again, on the platform, he should start walking again. What we can do now is we drag and drop a tap area on the stage above all the other assets. And now if we click on it, we can tell, go to and play jump in the ninja timeline. And then automatically after jump ends, it will walk again. I named the tab area jump button. Adapted to full size. So here we are, jump button, tab area, touch click. So it will work on mobile devices and desktop. Go to and play, ninja animation, is the receiver, label, jump, safe. Great, and let's have a look how this looks in the browser. Start the game, and as soon as I click, it jumps and will continue. Okay, cool. So this is basic jump animation and we're really flexible with it. Okay. Next, what we want to do is just jumping and walking around is not that fun. That's why we want to add some, let's say, enemies, some blockers. So as this is ninja game, of course, there will be ninja stars, you know, the small weapon. And what I've added now is a div, which is the full width, and I call it, important to recognize, ninja star underscore x. So this is very important. Um, I will, if I double click on it, I will have a ninja star underscore y and then a ninja star div where the animation happens. This is important because now the ninja star should um, animate from the right to the left on two different heights. The first container, the parent container cares about the x values, the x animation. And to be more flexible, the second the second div, which I've added now, the ninja star underscore y will care about the height where the ninja star will fly. This means independent of on the movement on the x coordinate, I can change the height as I like. So I'm now in, in ninja star underscore y, you can see in the breadcrumb navigation above the timeline. And I've added a new div container, which I now named Ninja Star. And I've dragged and dropped the image of my Ninja Star into this container. So put it directly within. It's exactly 20 pixels, exactly like the image. And what I do now is rotate the Ninja Star 90 degrees. Okay, so it will look like it's rolling, rolling, rolling. Make it infinite. And let's have a look at the preview, how it looks like. You can see the ninja star rotating now on the left. Okay, now let's move it a little bit. Go back to ninja star, ninja star underscore X and add an animation. Maybe same duration, one second. So it should start 
well, it should end uh, 20 pixels left of the stage and should start 20 pixels right of the stage. This is what we are animating now. Um, there won't be an easing because easing is really hard to handle for a gamer. The movement will be linear. And you see how it works. And you see that Ninja Star rotates, rotates, rotates because we've added, we've outsourced the animation of the Ninja Star in our child container. So we're doing the same now with, uh, like with the Ninja. We uh, don't loop the X movement, but we add an event and a label. So as there will be two heights where Ninja Star will fly, I call this event Ninja Bottom Ends. Change, add a new event, Ninja Star underscore X, timeline Ninja Star Bottom End. On the timeline, go to and play, Ninja Star X, important to find the right one, going to the label Ninja, Ninja Star Bottom. Okay, and this is how it looks like in the preview. So Ninja Star can Ninja can jump if I click on the tab area and Ninja Star is moving moving and moving and that's our tutorial